you've heard about the Great Wall of China. The ancient wonder stretching thousands of kilometers to defend against invaders. There's the Berlin Wall, a symbol of division that once split a city in two. And even the Western Wall in Jerusalem, an important site for spiritual reflection. But have you heard about the Great Wall of Africa? What exactly is this wall? Why is it being built? And what is its purpose? Is it as monumental as those other famous walls? Before we dive into the details of the Great Wall of Africa, let's first talk about the Sahara Desert and the reasons behind this ambitious project. The Sahara Desert is one of the most formidable landscapes on Earth, covering around 9.2 million square kilometers. However, the desert's boundaries are not static. They are expanding. Over the past century, the Sahara has grown significantly, encroaching upon arable lands and threatening the livelihoods of millions. Studies estimate that the Sahara expanded by approximately 10% between 1920 and 2013. During periods of extreme drought, its expansion accelerates, with estimates suggesting it could spread by hundreds of thousands of square kilometers within decades if current trends persist. Climate change, overgrazing, deforestation, and unsustainable agricultural practices are exacerbating this expansion. As the Sahara continues to grow, it threatens to merge with other arid regions, creating a vast belt of desert stretching across Africa. Projections indicate that if drastic measures are not taken, the Sahara could expand further by 10 to 20% by 2050, with potentially devastating consequences for the Sahel region, which borders the southern edge of the desert. The Sahel, a semi-arid region spanning about 5,400 kilometers from the Atlantic Ocean to the Red Sea, is home to some of the world's most vulnerable communities. People here depend on agriculture and pastoralism for their survival, making them highly susceptible to the impacts of desertification. The expansion of the Sahara threatens to turn the Sahel into a desert, forcing millions to migrate in search of fertile land and intensifying conflicts over dwindling resources. So what can stop the expansion of the Sahara? How can we protect millions of people from the relentless march of sand? Is there a way to bring life back to degraded lands? The answer to these questions is the Great Green Wall, a bold and ambitious initiative aimed at halting the desert's spread and transforming the landscape across Africa. The Great Green Wall initiative was launched by the African Union in 2007, with support from the United Nations and other international partners. This monumental project aims to create a living barrier of trees, vegetation, and sustainable agricultural practices to halt the Sahara's southward spread. Initially envisioned as a belt of trees stretching across the continent, from Senegal in the west to Djibouti in the east, the project has since evolved to include a variety of land restoration techniques and sustainable development practices that address the root causes of desertification. Its ultimate goal is to restore 100 million hectares of degraded land by 2030, sequester 250 million tons of carbon, and create 10 million green jobs in rural areas. The Great Green Wall is more than just a tree planting initiative. It encompasses a range of approaches aimed at building climate resilience and fostering sustainable livelihoods for communities across the Sahel. The program involves regenerating natural vegetation, improving water management, and promoting sustainable agricultural practices that can withstand the harsh climate. Techniques like half-moon planting, xi pits, and contour bunding are being used to maximize the impact of these efforts. One of the most prominent techniques used in the Great Green Wall is the half-moon planting method, a traditional water harvesting practice that helps maximize water retention in arid and semi-arid lands. In this technique, Half-moon-shaped depressions are dug into the ground, with their open ends facing uphill. The depressions are typically about 30 to 50 centimeters deep and 2 to 3 meters wide, depending on the slope and soil conditions. The curved shape helps to collect and store rainwater, directing it towards the center of the depression where seeds or young plants are sown. The half-moon planting technique significantly enhances water infiltration and reduces soil erosion, 
creating a microenvironment that supports plant growth even during dry spells. Another important technique employed in the Great Green Wall is the use of Xi pits, also known as Tassa pits. This is a traditional land rehabilitation practice used in West Africa to restore degraded soils and increase crop yields. Xi pits involve digging small holes, usually 20 to 30 centimeters deep and 20 to 40 centimeters wide, in which organic matter like manure or compost is placed. Seeds or seedlings are then planted in the pits. The Xi pit method improves soil fertility by concentrating nutrients and organic matter in the pits, while also promoting water infiltration and retention. This helps to rehabilitate degraded land and make it suitable for agriculture. Contour bunding is a technique used to reduce soil erosion and enhance water retention by creating embankments along the natural contours of the land. These earthen barriers slow down water runoff, allowing more time for rainwater to seep into the ground rather than flowing away. The result is improved moisture levels in the soil, which benefits both crops and trees. Contour bunding, combined with tree planting, has proven to be an effective method for stabilizing slopes, preventing further land degradation, and rehabilitating degraded farmland. Several countries along the Sahel have embraced the Great Green Wall, each contributing to the restoration effort with their specific approaches. In Senegal, where the project has seen some of its most significant achievements, more than 12 million drought-resistant trees have been planted across thousands of hectares. Local communities actively participate in the planting and maintenance of these trees, ensuring that the restored land remains productive and sustainable. In Ethiopia, another success story, over 15 million hectares of degraded land have been restored, largely through community-led initiatives that focus on soil and water conservation techniques. Other countries, such as Niger and Nigeria, have adopted innovative practices, such as farmer-managed natural regeneration. Involves encouraging the growth of tree stumps and shrubs that naturally sprout in fields, allowing the landscape to regenerate without the need for planting new seedlings. This approach has proven to be more cost-effective and sustainable, as it leverages the land's natural capacity for regeneration and engages local farmers in land management efforts. Despite the progress made, the Great Green Wall has faced significant challenges. As of recent assessments, less than 20% of the project's target of 100 million hectares has been restored. Political instability in some regions has hindered the implementation of restoration activities, while insufficient funding has slowed the project's momentum. The need for long-term financial commitment and international support is crucial, as the success of the initiative depends on sustained efforts and investment. Additionally, climate change poses a major obstacle, with rising temperatures and prolonged droughts threatening the survival of newly planted vegetation. The program is currently underway across more than 20 African countries, each contributing to the creation of a green belt that extends nearly 8,000 kilometers from west to east. Some of the countries actively involved in the Great Green Wall Initiative include Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Djibouti. These countries, located in the Sahel, face some of the harshest impacts of climate change, including frequent droughts, soil degradation, and food insecurity. The Great Green Wall serves as a critical effort to combat these challenges and protect the region's fragile ecosystems. The initiative has also gained support from international partners, including the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, the World Bank, the European Union, and the Global Environment Facility. In 2020, a financial boost came in the form of a $14 billion commitment over five years to accelerate progress on the Great Green Wall, with funds allocated for land restoration, sustainable agriculture, and community development projects. The initiative is also part of the broader United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, particularly Goal 15, which aims to protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems. The Great Green Wall's potential benefits go beyond environmental restoration. By providing green jobs and sustainable income sources, 
the initiative addresses some of the root causes of migration and conflict in the region. For example, young people who might otherwise be compelled to migrate due to lack of employment opportunities can now engage in restoration activities, farming, and agroforestry, contributing to local economies. The restored lands also have the potential to enhance food security by increasing agricultural productivity, which is vital for a region heavily dependent on subsistence farming. Ultimately, the success of the Great Green Wall Initiative lies in its ability to deliver on its promise of restoring 100 million hectares of land and providing a green lifeline to communities living on the front lines of desertification. Although progress has been slow and uneven, the project's vision remains a powerful symbol of hope for the future of Africa's drylands. The Great Green Wall not only represents a fight against the Sahara's expansion, but also serves as a model for global efforts to address land degradation, climate change and sustainable development. As the world continues to grapple with the impacts of climate change, the Great Green Wall stands out as an ambitious yet necessary endeavour to safeguard the environment and improve the lives of millions. Its success could inspire similar initiatives in other regions facing the threat of desertification, serving as a testament to the power of human resilience and collective action in the face of adversity.